Hey guys, it's Joe from Aussie Reptiles here and we're here with Jads. Today we're going to be doing a, another reptile room tour. I know we literally just did one, um, but we've already rearranged, so let's call it Reptile Room 3.0. Um, anyway, it's a little bit messy, so bear with us. There are cables. We've got a lot more cable management to do, some double sided tape and, and crap to just get stuff sorted, but for the most part, we're pretty happy with it. There are some enclosures which won't have lights on, so I'll probably use the flash just so we can sort of see. A lot of stuff's in brumation, or was supposed to be in brumation, but since moving them, pretty much everything that's supposed to be in brumation is currently out, so it's kind of defeated uh, that purpose. So hopefully I haven't stuffed up the season, but we'll see how it goes. Um, if it does, it's not the end of the world. There's always next year, and it's all fun and games anyway. But let's get straight in to the video. So we'll start here in this corner of the room. Um, first tank here, we have um, our marble velvet gecko pair. Nothing really exciting, not much to say about them. Um, they're geckos. Here we have our adult group of panther skinks. Um, so they're WA localities. There's, a, as I said, an adult group of them. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get some babies from them this year. Um, we do have some babies from them from last year um, when I got them off the previous owner. Um, so they're cool there. They only got their UV light running at the moment because again there we're trying to cool them down to get them ready to produce. So below them we have Sherbet, so you can come in a little bit close and have a look at him. Uh, he's supposed to be in brumation, he's supposed to be sleeping. Um, he was when he was in the rack system, but we've just moved him into a 4 by 2 by 2 um, and currently he's decided to come out and have a wander. So this will be his, well this is his enclosure. Um, obviously the heat light is not on currently, we are running the UV light, it's a 12% um, Arcadia. Um, it's running, we'll run that as well, but his hide is up under the pile of hay. Um, so anyway, that's sure, but again, nothing too crazy hot special there. Below them we've got Echo and Charlie, my two, uh, two of our lace monitors, a normal and a Bell's phase. Not much to see there, they're not awake. Um, if we come on to this side, up in here, we've got a young Tristus and a young Ridgetail. You hardly see them. Um, below them, um, you can see him here. Ignore this writing, this was the old inhabitant. Uh, but this is just a little grow out unit for a, um, a blotch blue tongue. That is a het exanthic uh, blotch blue tongue from Joe Ball. Uh, and we've also got an adult group, which we still need to bring across to our new house. Um, below them are the younger panther skinks. Um, you can see the tail ends of some of them. They're very secretive. Um, again, we don't need to spend too much time on them. Um, now, what we'll do is I'll hand it over to Jads and she can discuss our bearded dragon wall. So we'll do that. Okay, so moving on from what Jake was just saying, this is my bearded dragon wall, or I should say ours, but mostly mine. Um, in the top tank we've got Kira, who's my Hypo Zero Leatherback Het Trans. She was my first little girl. Quite a uh, cheeky... Skits. And schizo little lizard. Come here. Um, who's going through her first or her uh, most recent shed, as you can see on her leg. Um, beautiful, beautiful girl. Little, little shit. <laughs> um, She's, she almost got your finger. I know. She's had a go at me before. We're yeah, trying to get her a bit more hand friendly because <laughs> she's a lot more food responsive at the moment. But the more we handle her, the better she'll get. So she's my first one. Um, Who did she come from? She came from Radical Reptiles um, at the Reptile Expo in March. Yep. So she was one of my first reptile purchases. She was your first? She is my first. Yes. Um, so she is up the top there. Ignore that previous inhabitant. In the second tank below, we have Hiccup, who is a Het Zero Het Trans bearded dragon. Um, he is also from Radical Reptiles. He's a normal scale. Um, he's just a normal scale. Um, and is going to be the partner to Kira. And he's even worse than Kira in terms of how schizo he can be. Um, and as you can see, he's also going through a shed right now. Um, again, working on getting a little bit more in terms of hand friendly out of him. He's a bit better than Kira in terms that he's not quite as agitated. 
there's a process that we're doing to get them onto the hand. What what are we? We are. So when it comes to feeding time, what Jake will do is he'll have the tongs um, out with the bug on the end, and he'll hold it a little bit closer to sort of the middle of my arm and encourage Kira and Hiccup to come up to get their food. So I have to climb across my hand um, in order to get their food. So we're hoping that that will help them get a little bit more um, hand friendly and a little less jumpy and agitated. Yeah, it builds a little bit more confidence. That way they come on to us rather than us constantly always grabbing them. It's not... <laughs> yeah, that's... I think... That's exactly did... why. <laughs> oh no, it wasn't him that made the runner in our other video, it was the red guy. If she may possibly be <laughs> along the lines of a dunno. Um, yeah, look, it's not common for Be The Dragons to be like this. Um, we make a running joke that Jake and Talia from Radical Reptiles make some pretty feisty bearded dragons. Uh, I mean, we've only got two specimens from them, but both are exactly the same. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. Slow process, but she's doing a good job, so... And as they get larger, they tend to usually chill out. So. Yeah, so we're hoping that they will chill out. Moving on, on to the third tank, we have our newest additions, which are now the hypotranslucents, beautiful orange reds. So up here, we've got the um, the boy, so who I picked. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful young man. Um, very hand friendly, not in any way uh, aggressive. He's not. Food dominant either, so I don't have to in um, don't have to encourage him with food to be able to climb up. As you can see, he just climbed up all by himself. Um, They've only just started they taking only, off the tongs. They are only um, a few weeks into living with us, and he has only what two days, three days in, has only now just started to to actually feed off the tongs properly. So making good progress there, um, but he has a beautiful shade of red orange on his face there as you can see um and a beautiful beautiful pattern all the way along so he is uh an absolutely gorgeous boy and i'm very very excited for what they could produce um if we get any uh any clutches out of them this year so it's something to look forward to with this little young man We'll try this, yeah. We'll They're try, still. We'll see how they we'll see grow. How they Don't know how it'll go yet. But otherwise, next year definitely. He's certainly got a personality to him. This one. He's a lot more, a lot more inquisitive. Down in the third tank here is the one that Jake picked out. Um, she is a beautiful bearded dragon, same as the boy, but slightly different as she is a dunner. Yes. Um, which Jake was quite excited about once we found that out. Um, There's a story to these ones, though, to clarify, in particular with her. Um, we had a friend that wanted her, and we weren't going to get her, but we went in to said place in the hopes to... I mean, Jadzia wanted a nice red pair. So we picked out the male. She chose the male straight off the rip. Nice red male, the reddest one there was there. Um, we were leaving this one because, again, our friend wanted it. But uh, what, what ended up happening? So after looking through the entire batch of red ones they had there... Which probably would have been like 10 odd dragons. There was 10 or 12 of them. She was the only girl in the entire batch. So we kind of had to take her. But I've promised, and you know who you are, we'll, once we get a, a clutch and some babies... You will get your first pick. You've got your name down. First pick and on the house. So... Yes. She is gorgeous nonetheless. Not quite as red as he is. A little bit more orangey than red, um, but beautiful nonetheless. And her pattern from her back to her tail is also quite pretty, which is something that Jake uh, quite liked about her. But That's because of the Dunna. Obviously, it's because of the Dunna trait. Um, but again, she's quite inquisitive. Uh, we're still unsure on the names of these ones. We've got a few different ones, such as... Uh, Lex and Tim, Tim from, from Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Jungle or uh, Jurassic, sorry, Park. Jurassic Park. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I said Jurassic, <laughs> Jurassic Park. Not the store. 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. So someone suggested that to us on our Instagram and I didn't mind that name. I'm unsure of it. I don't know how I feel about it, especially for the boys' sake. Um, but then the other names that we thought of so far, running along the theme, you know, with Hiccup, 
um, was Rough Nut and Tough Nut, the siblings from How to Train Your Dragon. So we are still deciding on what we want to do there. So we'll we'll let you know as soon as the names have been chosen. Um, nonetheless, you can keep suggesting them. We'll keep looking at them until we've decided what we want to do. But yes, those are our four beautiful bearded dragons. Looking forward to being able to pair them up and hopefully get some uh, clutches out of them. My, my first... Uh, set of reptiles coming into this hobby. It's a bit different, but nonetheless exciting. All right, whilst I was sitting on the floor here filming filming Jadzia's segment, we're going to go into this tank here, um, which belongs to Pearl, another one of my blue tongues that is supposed to be in brumation, but has decided that, she, I mean, since I moved her, she doesn't want to. Still no heat, no UVB either, so there's no form of warmth in there, and she's quite cool to the touch. I mean, not that this room gets drastically cold, but uh, she's a white northern blue tongue. As you can see, she's pretty big. I think from memory, she's 60, pretty much, I think she was 60 centimeters on the dot. So her enclosure at this current moment is quite boring. It's quite dark, so there's not a real huge point to film in there. But she's got a custom unit with a custom background. Which once we get some decoration and stuff, it'll look quite nice. But for now, she's literally got to hide in some hay to brumate in. So that's Pearl. And then we've also got a pair of water skinks here. Uh, in fact, actually, <laughs> I was going to say they're not going to be out, but there is one. I don't know whether you can see them or not. Um, there is one chilling right there. There. So not too shabby. Um, so now we'll cut so I can get up and we'll continue on. So in here, um, as you would have seen in the last video, this is the pair of black rock skinks uh, and our Jackie dragon male who resides in here. Um, I said male, but I actually don't know. I don't remember what I said in the last video either, but it's a male or a female, obviously. Um, but yeah, black rock skinks, they're really cool. So they're supposed to be asleep, but they're not, but this is what it is. Uh, and then in the unit across from them, we actually have uh, a pair of tree skinks, which they're going to be hiding in the log. So, um, cause that big main log is a hollow log. So I doubt we'll see them. Uh, in the unit above, these ones we're not going to really see much of, um, besides our reflection. <laughs> Hello. Um, because the lights are off. But in the one that Judd's is currently filming, um, is our Northern, um, Northern Territory, uh, well, Alice Springs to be specific, locality Centralia Blue Tongues. And up above, I might just quickly steal it. Um, you can see my reflection, but you can also see those two there. They're our WA ones, which they have been in proper brumation for like the last couple of weeks. Um, but for whatever reason, uh, well, I know why. I disturbed them, I moved them, and they've come out. But again, they've got no heat source, no UVB. Um, so hopefully they go back to sleep. Is your finger in it? Nope. It's right across the screen. Your finger's in it. Hmm. Hopefully they go back to sleep. Across from them, I've got a pygmy bearded dragon named Derpy. Um, bit of a rescue, pretty bad metabolic bone disease, um, and also a long-nosed dragon. They get along the little best of buddies, um, and they've got a 100 watt uh, UVA, UVB uh, heat light, uh, mercury vapor, uh, solar glow. Um, and then back this way, uh, we've, we have the rack, the rack system, which was where the blue tongues were currently sleeping, as you would have seen in the last video. But they have now been moved uh, out of there and into their tanks. So the Jads is now filming the Western blue tongues. Um, so again, no heat source currently. However, they've decided to crack a lacket and wake up. Nah, this you the... moved them. That was your fault. Yeah, I know. Um, their enclosure, the westerns right now, is the most basic of the enclosures we have. I need to get some more sort of arid themed decoration. So again, they've literally just got their substrate straw for hiding in and their hides. This is the first time they've actually been put together. So it'll be interesting to see how they go. This is the male and the females off in her hide. So they've been fine so far. I've been monitoring them um, literally pretty much all day. I've spent in here rearranging and cleaning and stuff. Um, and they've been absolutely fine. Above them, um, we have, this is Tiger and Bronze. So this is one of our pairs of Eastern Blue Tongues um, in which uh, also I don't believe we're gonna see them. Tiger has been 
in and out of brumation, whereas bronze, the female has pretty much been, well, she's completely been in it. Um, oh, there you go, you can see Tiger <laughs> hanging tiger. out. And bronze, she's tucked up in the hide as well. So uh, I should actually mention quickly um, that so these are our new units that we've just recently acquired. Um, I do still have to install proper UVB lights, so I'll be doing Reptile Systems um, T5 units. Um, so we'll get them soon, but whilst they're in brumation, I don't have that stuff on, not the end of the world. But these are five foot long, uh, or 150 odd centimetres, uh, 70 centimetres deep, and they're 50 centimetres tall. Um, 45 centimetres tall, actually. So these are fantastic for pairs of blue tongues because there is so much space. Um, but if we then go down, uh, we've also moved our snakes into these. So here we have Tequila and Aries. They're one, well, basically that's the main pair um, of our albino or albino Darwin carpet pythons. They're okay with handling. They get a bit snappy. Both of them have actually come to me. Um, well, Aries in particular, the, the younger one, the smaller one there, the male, he's come to me from a, a customer and a friend. Um, that unfortunately they just couldn't handle it very well, but I've handled it a few times and it's pretty decent. Sometimes getting it out of the cage can be a mission, but they're fine. And Tequila, same sort of thing. She has her hit and miss days, but she's usually pretty good as well. And then I get back on the floor. You can see they're Snowy. So Snowy is the spare male in which we'll be basically probably um, sharing Tequila, the female, between the two males. Um, over the breeding season, which I've only just turned the heat lights back on today. Um, I'm a little bit late to the game. Um, I left them for one extra week because the Aries and Tequila didn't quite shut themselves down for winter. Snowy did, but he's, had his, he's got a heat light. I'm probably going to change it to one of the uh, basking lights. I prefer that, and I find that the reptiles prefer that too, just from personal experience. But Snowy is a big boy. Um, it's great that he's now in a five foot because him himself... He uh, himself is a, a Darwin carpet that would be just around, um, I think, I need to actually properly officially measure him. He is, um, if I go back to my messages, I'll put it down um, in, in text at the bottom of his weight, because I weighed him um, when I was talking to Joe about breeding them. Um, and he is, uh, he would be... I feel like you roughly said about eight, eight to ten feet. He's between, yeah, we'll say the eight and nine foot mark. Um, so he's a big boy. Uh, Heath Snake Control came out and did a clip with me. I'll in insert the photo here. Uh, and he actually said to me it's one of the, well, it is the largest carpet python Darwin that he's seen. So I haven't seen that many specimens, but he's a big boy. He's a real solid heifer. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's the new reptile room. We do, this is going to be a longer video, but we've also now got to sneak back out to the lounge room to where we have now moved our frogs and forest animals. So let's go do that. Right, so out here in the lounge, ignore the mess. There's still boxes we need to unpack. It's only new into our new house, but this is where we've now moved the sort of what I call the tropical wall, plus a little tree skin. So this is that he's still in the process of probably finding a new home. But we've got our spotted marsh frogs, albinos and normals. Um, we won't really do any close-ups. This video's already gone for a long time. So we're just gonna go quick, but Boys Forest Dragon, also Perrin's Tree Frogs in here. Um, the bottom tank is a pair of pink tongue skinks. Uh, unfortunately, they haven't had light for a couple days, so unfortunately the poor pile of palms are sort of dying. Hopefully we can bring them back. But I also don't mind that look because it looks very much like a New South Wales like forest, so it's kind of cool. Next to them, we've got our uh, Eastern Dwarf Tree Frogs. Um, they're a tiny frog species. Um, I did get a clip of them that I could overlay, but it was quite blurry. Uh, and then next to them, we have our banjo frog uh, group colony, whatever you want to call them. So these tanks run in a monsoon, mul uh, monsoon multi exoterra misting set. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's this area. We'll jump back into the reptile room. Okay, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we're going to see Jadzia's dragons and the reptile room and our other lounge room slash uh, amphibian reptile area. So yeah, we'll call this reptile room 3.0 um, since it's changed. Uh, what's the next time there's more changes, but I think this is pretty much set for now. Um, there's only a few more things that we want to upgrade and change, but that's not going to be anytime soon. So that's the video. Do you want to say anything quickly? Mm -hmm.
I think you covered it all. So thank you for watching. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.